Hey, good evening everybody. Tonight's recipe is pierogi. For those of you that don't know, pierogi is an Eastern European meat pie. Uh, it tastes really good. It's got a very rich dough. It's got uh, cream cheese, butter, heavy cream, and flour and salt. And here's the recipe. For the filling, I've got lean ground beef, onion, boiled eggs, rice, and the seasonings are going to be salt, pepper, dill, Worcestershire sauce, and some sour cream. So first thing to do is get the dough going because that has to chill. I soften the butter in the microwave uh, for 20 seconds and so I'm going to cream this with the whip. Scrape down the bowl a bit. Add the cream. Scrape down the bowl one more time and give it one more good mix before you add the flour and salt mixture. I'm going to add the flour in portions and by the way yes you can do this by hand but it's a lot of work. So as you can see, the um, mixture is starting to form a dough and move away from the sides. When I see this, one more little addition, then I'm going to switch to the dough hook. Put in half of the remaining mixture. Scrape it down. Add the rest of the flour. And let it go till it's all mixed in. At this point you don't want it on high because you can burn your motor out pretty easily. This is a really thick dough. So basically what you're looking for here is that the dough has formed a ball and it's essentially cleaned off the sides of the mixing bowl. Alright, and you can see it there. At this point this is good enough to take out wrapping some plastic wrap and chill it in the fridge while I get the filling ready. Start frying the beef over medium heat and get the onion chopped in the meantime. Check in on the beef. And get the onion chopped. You want a really fine dice for this, okay? The beef is just about ready to take out. What you're looking for is to have it completely cooked, all the paint gone, get the water boiled off, because yeah, you know, they just have so much water in today's beef, it's amazing. And then, when you got the grease coming out, that's where you want it. Turn the heat down a bit because you do not want this to overcook because it is going to be baking as well. As 
So do like this with your spatula, okay, to get the grease to come down. Now, since the dough is so rich, after I get the beef out, yes, I'm going to take out some of this fat because that's just a little too much for one onion, all right. <laughs> and there's enough fat in the dough. And by the way, feel free to use this technique in any uh, ground beef recipe that you've got to try to make it a bit healthier for you. You don't lose any of the flavor doing this. So that's all the fat that came out. I'm just going to get a spoon and spoon some of that off. Yeah. So I got a couple of tablespoons of fat left, and that's going to be more than enough for the onion. This point, sprinkle it with a little salt, not too much. This helps the water come out of the onion and cook down quicker. So the onions are starting to caramelize, which is good. So in the meantime, I'm going to start putting the mixture together. Just cross slice your egg. So the onion is pretty much done. Okay, so mix that up a bit, put the rice in. One note here, what the rice does, aside from adding bulk and, you know, a bit of balance to the dish, um, is it also helps to soak up any remaining moisture um, that's in the onion or the beef, so that the dough itself does not get soggy, which is good. So once you have all that mixed up, then you want to season it to taste. I do this by sight because I've been making these for a while. So I just want to put a bit of pepper, not too much. Shake up your Worcestershire. Hit it two or three times. So there's one, two, three. Stir that up. Now this, I like a lot of dill in this, all right? It really makes the flavor. So I get some nice dill weed. All I can get is dried in the winter. Well, I probably could get fresh, but I'm not paying that. Taste comes out the same. Probably a little better with fresh, but it's okay. So basically, just shake it to cover, okay? Mix that in really well. And lastly, add the sour cream, okay? This is also visual. I start with a big tablespoon like that, all right? Mix that up. What this is doing is not only providing flavor and also a solvent for the spices, um, so the flavor is better. It's also keeping it from falling apart when you're going to make the little meat pies. Which you'll greatly appreciate because you'll notice when you're making little meat pies the last thing you want is having your filling go all over the place like this. So I'm going to put another spoon in and a bit. Stir this. Okay. So that, I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it. Okay. That is just enough sour cream. You can see, even though it's not completely cold, that it's not a solid mass, but all the ingredients are basically sticking to each other, which is what you want. So I'm going to put this outside, because i got a free fridge out here. That's the nice part about living in Canada. You get a free refrigerator between November and <laughs> March or April, depending on where you are. And I just pop stuff outside. 
until it's cold. Uh, the oven is preheating to 400 degrees and the dough is chilled. Okay, how you can tell it's firm to the touch. Now, I want to try to get three dozen out of this. Okay, so the best way to do this, uh, and there's a couple ways you can handle these, all right? Some people like the wax paper, I can show you that. I just sort of freehand it. But, one thing both methods do have in common is just take the dough that you're going to need and put the rest back in the fridge, all right? So, if I'm going to make 36 out of here and I take a quarter of the dough, I can make nine out of that, all right? So I'm just going to quarter this up and put the rest back outside for the time being. So for the filling, I've got my dumpling spoon. Uh, if you've never seen one of these before, you can get them at uh, Asian houseware stores. You can use a teaspoon, but I find this works just as great. I mean, these are Eastern European, but dumplings are basically dumplings, no matter which way you slice it, all right? And I also have my noodle stick, um, which I will use for a rolling pin to show you the wax paper, wax paper method. So, what I'll do first is start this under the wax paper so you can kind of get an idea, all right? Soften it up a bit. But you'll see this gets really soft really fast, all right? So you don't want to overhandle this if you can avoid it. Okay? So if you are going to be using just wax paper, okay, you are going to roll it out in between two sheets, okay? So it's an eighth of an inch thick, and then either cut it in squares and then triangles, or use a cookie cutter to make your circles, all right? What I'm going to do is make this into a cylinder. Okay, and visually eyeball this in thirds. And then take each piece again, eyeball that in thirds. Okay. Now you can just park your excess dough on the parchment. Now I will use the wax paper for this. I could freehand it, um, but it's just quicker and cleaner. I like to make these sort of oval. And it will take a bit of practice for you to feel, and it's really hard for you to see, what an eighth of an inch is. And it doesn't have to be precise, all right? This is cooking, it's not rocket science. Basically, what you want it to be is you want it to be thin enough that you can put in as much filling as you want, all right, without it breaking, and, but not so thick that the dough doesn't rise properly and tastes uh, bad when you eat it. Okay, so get a little bit on here, not too much, because it's very important the edges do not get grease or filling or anything on them, because then they won't stick. And yes, I probably did make too much filling, but I can always make some more dough. And this stuff, uh, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. You can just eat it as it is. Or you can fry it up or use it in a recipe or whatever you want. Okay? So similar. Just make sure you guys are getting a good shot of that. Okay? And of course, make sure your hands are always clean when you do this. Okay? Pinch it from the edges. And 
and make these little half moon pies. Okay. And you can always shape them after and plump them up a little bit. Okay, I like mine standing up instead of flat. Okay, so I'll be popping that on the parchment in a minute. And just to show you after, um, you can either do these one by one or after. What's important is that you do put little air vents in it. So, whatever steam is inside escapes and does not break it open. Okay. So I nearly done the first half. Just thought I'd show you, you know, if you go 5-4, 5-4, you can get 18 on a sheet really nicely. Okay. And I was going to say, you know, like whether you're making piroshki or chasu bao, it's like, you know, which is Chinese buns, it's all the same, you know. It's like the wrappers are different, the fillings are different, the techniques are basically the same. So this is another way to do it, okay, is you kind of cup it in your hand and get in there and close it up okay and yeah if there's a little dill on the dough trust me nobody will notice when these are baked don't worry about it okay see that and just even it up there okay so I got one more to make here and just for you to see yeah, there'll be a little bit of filling left over, but not much. I hit that pretty close. And I was going to say, you know, you're always better to have too much filling with this than not enough, all right? Because this is such a special dough, you definitely don't want to waste it. And pop them into the oven at 400 for 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, it's been about 20 minutes now. Let's just pop them out and take a look. Yeah. So these are a short crust, and you don't want them excessively brown. They're really hot right now. As you can see, only a couple of them popped open, but nothing spilled out, and so it's all good. And I'll just give you a look at the bottom. Yeah. I have these cooling on an oven rack. Uh, you definitely want to do that with these because you don't want them um, to get damp on the bottoms. Okay, these are still a little too hot to comfortably handle, but I still want to pick one up. And give you a nice close look at that. All right, and cut one open for you, so you can see. Yeah, nice flaky crust. Okay. And like I said, these are great for, um, you know, holiday dinner parties, um, potlucks, whatever, you know. You can heat these up, again, in the oven. I don't recommend the microwave for this. And they're equally good uh, served cold, just as is, or with some additional sour cream, all right? So there's my piroshki. Thanks for watching my movie, and I really hope to see you again.